Hello everyone, Steve here from Tech Toy Tinker and Retro Arena. Today I'm going to take a few minutes to introduce you guys to a new beta build that we're releasing. This is Ares for AMD64 devices. However, it's a 32 gigabyte image that you can flash onto a USB stick and run from the USB stick, so it does not have to be installed to your main drive. I'm just going to give you a little preview of what's in here. The few things that are missing from the theme will be added over the next few days by Hursty, and you can just update the theme manually from Retro Arena setup. Currently I'm running this from a USB 3.0 stick. If you use a SSD USB you'll get faster speeds even. But running this on an old i7 2.8 gigahertz with a 1050 video card this computer doesn't exactly like well this GPU doesn't exactly like GameCube but it should be playable Keeping in mind, because it's a PC, the better your hardware is, the better this will run, and everything thereafter. This is actually not using standalone, I'm using the Web Retro Core right now, which also has a bit to do with it. If it runs like this with the Core, standalone is going to run way better. What I'm going to have to do, I think, for future builds is install Dolphin from Source. So this way we have the GUI and it's easier to change options. You can do that yourself. There's a really simple tutorial. You can just literally copy and paste into a terminal that will do that for you as well. I'll leave a link in the video description for it. As you can see, there was a couple pauses or snags at first while it was buffering and loading everything, but once it's going, it's going. Except for that. I'm also willing to bet this is using OpenGL instead of a Vulkan API. Either way though, this is a 1050 graphics card, so I wasn't expecting perfection. Of course all the easy stuff is fine, Game & Watch, and even Dreamcast and things like that. I only have one Dreamcast game, but... Honestly, it's not easy to dump Dreamcast games. Like, I don't... I only know two people in total that have the ability to, or a CD-ROM drive, that will dump Dreamcast games in the first place. My kitty's being talkative. She wants attention. The other part that I should mention, <clears throat> I got my USB stick for the games plugged into the other side of the computer, which is a USB 2 port. I don't suspect that should make too much of a difference just for loading in the game file from, but it is for sure slower. Running from USB 2 or 3 is definitely not the optimal solution. But I didn't want to install it onto my hard drive internally on the computer because then I'd have to just replace it later. And this is still a work in progress, and it's going to have to be done a couple more times. Some changes will be made, as always. As you can see, though, Dreamcast runs okay. Always got to make sure we got CPS 1, 2, and 3. As you can see, most of the systems have a custom boot splash. Not all of them. Some of them, is, there's a few that are still missing, but 
For the ones that do, you see this. If they don't, you'll just see a black screen for a minute. If you're watching this video today, or within an hour or two of the time that it says it was uploaded, then this build will be coming tonight. As this video is uploading, I plan to start uploading the zip as well. This will be beta 1. This right here. Metro R is one nine one four. Switch is being stubborn. It doesn't want to direct boot. So what's going to happen is you'll go to boot your game. Also, I don't have any keys or anything set up. And I won't in the public builds either. I do not distribute keys. I do not distribute BIOS or ROMs. All of those things are your problem. If you want to play Yuzu, I recommend that you have a modded switch. It's the easiest way to do it. Because your keys need to come from your own console, generally speaking. Apparently it wants to hang there for a minute. I could wait for it to load, which might take a minute, or I could just force it to close like that. And while we're here, I'm going to do a couple other things. So, I've left this here because it's easy to edit uh, your ES systems config and mass change things if you want. We've got Cody here. And also something a few people were asking me to make sure I included support for. We have Steam. It'll take a moment to do its thing, but it'll open. I had to install Wine and i386 into the build for this. Lutris is also here. You'll need to make your own account. I can't do that for you because it saves all of your games in your individual settings. And we go back to Emulation Station. There's not too much more I wanted to do, <coughs> excuse me, show you guys on this. This is a work in progress, and it will be for a while. Uh, 3DS, it's the same as um, the previous Nintendo system was. It doesn't want a direct launch yet. I haven't figured that out. So what's going to happen is it's going to launch a GUI. It's not a big deal, though, because this is something that's completely software and uh, scripting. So when I figure it out, you can literally just swap your ES systems config with the new one that I'll provide. You won't have to reflash or anything like that. And so there's no point in really holding off releasing a beta for that. Uh, PS3 is also the same way as is PS2. Well, no, PS2 you can direct launch, but again, you have to set up your BIOS and things like that yourself. Uh, PS3 you need to install firmware, which I won't provide you. And you have to set up your own controller as well. Much like Yuzu, this will launch the GUI here. It's pretty standard. It's the same as any other build of it. You just gotta use it as such. As always, uh, thank you for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Feel free to try out the build and either use the company email on the website or reply to this video with any thoughts of what could be improved or if you notice any bugs or things that need tweaking, it would be greatly appreciated. Take care.